Louder, more evidence that this country is losing its sense of humour. Pete Limer from JW Ash and Son Butchers has been told he's not allowed to write little saucy um, double entendres on his advertising A board outside his shop. Things such as big breasted birds, ah, oh, how offensive, or horny sausages. <laughs> anyway, so for years this guy's been doing it. Um, locals love it, customers love it, it's all part of fun. I suppose it's like, you know, see what his imagination comes up with um, the next time. And it's, it's good. Start to get people talk, don't they? People smile, they laugh, they have a chat. It's all part of being British. That's what we do. Anyway, one complaint. And I wonder whether that one complaint was actually just the copper saw it and decided to complain themselves, as they do. Anywho, so, one complaint. The day they came in, <laughs> I think the second visit they told him to change his board, it, on the board it said, Big cocks. <laughs> it's to the point, and, uh, and uh, they made him change it. And apparently, he, he's you know he's got a good sense of humour, this guy. So he put something like, "Let us tenderise your rump in the shop," something along those lines. Anyway, so basically, the PC PCs are still trying to remove any any trace of Britishness via way of sense of humour, because that's what we're known for, right? We're known for that. That's the whole thing. I was watching Carry On film clips a little while ago, just sort of as a as a refresher, and it's funny. I mean, to be honest with you, you know, it, it's silly. It's not as maybe it's not making me laugh as much as I used to when I was a kid, but it's just funny. Sid James talking about big baps, and you know, it's just that's that was a lot of fun. And then I was thinking about I was working in the kitchen this morning because I do a bit of chefing sometimes, and there was a. I, was, I hadn't worked this place before, and there was one lady who uh, was bent right over in front of me as I walked around, you know, and I couldn't get past her, so I sort of had to just stand there and, and sort of admire her very large, full bottom, madam. So if you watch this, I quite like a big bum. Anyway, um, when she got up, she was all like, hey, I thought you bet you thought your luck was in there, and you know, we and for a, for a minute or so, we just had a bit of a laugh together. Don't even know a name, but we, we just we enjoyed the moment. We we there was it was fun for fuck's sake. And they want to stop that. That that's they you can't have that. You can't have people having fun and enjoying themselves. We've all got to just go through gulag, and be miserable bastards. And I remembered a job offer I once had um, for a restaurant, and it was a decent job offer. The money was all right. And the chef who was being sacked, the head chef, was on his honeymoon. And he had no idea that when he got back, he was losing his job. And his awful crime, I wonder what it was. Well, I'll tell you. It was, he told a dirty joke. He told a dirty joke. He got sacked. It, was over, it, was, it wasn't even overheard. It was told in the presence of all the staff. His partner was there, the other chefs, the waiting staff, and the waitress, I don't believe, was offended. I think she told the joke to her parents, thinking they might find it funny. And of course, they got extremely offended, and they forced this guy out of a job. I mean, wankers, if you, if you watch, is unlikely. But you know, to, to actually make someone lose their job because they told a dirty joke, so anyway, I told them to stick the job because there's no chance I was going to do it. Partly out of solidarity, and if they're going to sack him for that, I, I'd be out. I'd be out in weeks. So anyway, I'll share. Um, I'll share a link to carry on and stuff. And I haven't checked the Sun yet, and it's their sort of thing. This traditionally they would be all over a story like this, and you know there'd be some sort of campaign to say how stupid it was and leave this guy alone and you know interviews with some old la some old granny who likes to get uh, faggots there because he does nice big round meatballs you know that sort of stuff it's what it's what we like that's the good stuff that's what makes this fucking existence worthwhile isn't it anyway if you're upset by political correctness going mad give us a thumbs up subscribe all that stuff anyway see you in the next one